Well, hello, hello, and another week it is Magic Manifesting Monday, and I wanted to give you a small dose of body mind medicine uh, to really get you into um, an area or a space in your life where if you're feeling drained, like so many people are, and they're kind of doing that last push, last two months of the year um, coming up. Hi, Kelly and Laura, nice to see you here. And I'm hoping that this is going to help you. I'm going to give you five simple tips, and they're probably reminders uh, to you if you sort of feel like you're running on empty at the moment, um, how you can actually take some really simple um, timeouts and keep some appointments with yourself so that you don't feel drained and overwhelmed um, by your increasingly long list of things that that you have to to do and still perhaps want to accomplish um, this side of 2018 and um, if you're you know by now I think if you've been with me for a while you're starting to understand how to be the observer um, of the part of you um, let's call it the, the child parts that may be running your life. We've been talking a lot about triggers last week and um, I'm going to do more of that over in my uh, True Nature page. But energy management is such an important part of healing because remember the body and the brain are running a lot on autopilot. You know, you learn how to drive a car and if you are exhausted, you don't know how you even got home, but you did because your emotional reactions just become automatic. You know, it's like riding a bike. You never really forget and you're not really conscious about your behaviors and your moods or your thoughts. Um, that can be a product of autopilot thinking. And one of the things that I really love about um, teaching people and coaching people, um, and one of the amazing things that happens inside of my Out of the Blues program, is that people are in a learning mode to learn how to reset their nervous systems and live trigger free. And science has proved that if you're in an anxious state, you are on automatic because you're not thinking, you're just, you're, you're just reacting to the way that you're feeling. And um, if you don't have the right tools in your um, toolkit, then your cortisol is going to kick out, your palms are going to sweat, you're going to become anxious and grumpy, and um, you're just going to get in this Mobius strip of, of you know, like riding and wanting to get off. So just remember that when you get off that that autopilot mode to learning mode, different parts of your brain get activated and then you do start to calm down. And it is amazing, I, it never gets old, that when you start to understand and respect that your subconscious mind is not created, very creative, your conscious mind is creative and it takes desire and willingness and respect and an inspiration and intention, you have to want to find peace, you have to want to be able to de-stress and figure things out and and get curious about how you're behaving in, in the world. Um, from your child parts that are having a temper tantrum or um, from the adult that is creating secure attachment and I think it's really important um, you know if you've been with me for a while and you want to know be notified when I'm going live with these little love notes you know click the follow like it share it with others um, because this is how you start to when you start to have breakthroughs and you share it this is the only way that we get to heal the world is you know we need to inspire each other and we need to be um, self-regulated in how we are creating our lives and our own economies and everything else so we we need to help each other and share this information so just know um, hi Wendy and Jennifer and Rosa so just remember when you have unhealed trauma until it's resolved you might um, be going into a very reactive triggered response all the time and it can be part of that default automatic pilot thing um, that research teaches us that you're running on empty right you you have to know that if your brain has um, the ability you know to be active you know while you're tying your shoelaces or brushing your teeth because you know how to do it the same applies with emotions so if every time somebody asks you to do something 
um, or, or suggest that maybe you're over salting the food or asking you, you know, why are you hanging the picture on that wall when they want it on that wall, you're going to, you, you could get triggered, right? Because it, it's coming up from persecution of the child that, that wasn't taught how to process these complex emotions. Um, and it can be quite intrusive. So as an adult, I hear this often with my clients that they get upset when they feel like people are questioning their motives or, um, you know, some, sometimes it's a trigger because it's activating those unresolved childhood parts that feel like they, they couldn't protect themselves. So um, you go into autopilot, right, or learned helplessness or, um, or you're very reactive. Um, so does it make sense that, you know, when you're unaware that the behaviors are actually ingrained in your subconscious, um, when you become aware of it, then you can start to do something with it. And I just want you to know that you can learn to observe how your brain behaves and to, to just be compassionate that if you're highly emotional or you're a highly sensitive empathic person, which a lot of my tribe are, you need to learn how to be the witness. You need to observe what is coming up, the patterns and the pathways that were in blind spots before you actually acknowledge that they were there. And then you can get curious um, through self-inquiry of when you first had that thought that you weren't enough or you had to defend yourself so that you can start to heal yourself. Um, you know, this is a big part of my work in healing trauma is that you have to get to the root cause of what it is and understand um, neuroscience and, and your biomechanics, your body chemistry and how it changes, you know, because we are holistic beings and you can't separate parts and pieces of yourself out. We have to know the brain works a certain way and it has a job to do, right? And different areas in your brain do different things. Like the amygdala is there to fire you up when there is a real danger or threat. And it doesn't really make sense to feel your emotions and then not follow your body's impulse to actually get curious and think about what's going on underneath the surface. So I invite you to get curious and look at how logic plays into your emotions. Because the more logic you can, logically you can become about how you're feeling emotionally, I think that's where you get the balance. That's where that's where you get more harmony in your life because rather than react, you're thinking about the way that you feel and what stories maybe come up with it, right? That's the creative process of it. It's not automatic where you're just reacting, reacting, reacting all the time um, and literally sort of going from one trauma, drama and emergency to another. You're not learning. You just keep recycling the same old situation over and over again. So it's when you can feel that you actually heal. That's how you get in touch with your God self and you step into vitality and excitement and abundance and you are and you start to create your life so I encourage you to get out of reactive mode especially if you are a highly sensitive person to to slow everything down and 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 start looking at it as an interesting point of view that you're feeling this way or that this is happening this way or um, that that um, you're responding from the three-year-old. You're not responding from the adult self that, that does know better. Um, so I really want you to get that. And I want to give you, as I said, five, five ways that you can, especially if you're a highly sensitive empath or, um, um, you know, you just, you just feel hurt and pained. I mean, I have had to stay off Facebook for a while because I'm just feeling the pain and so much grief for the world and the animals and everything else. So I also, before I give you these five tools today, um, I want to just go into, because it's been coming up with a couple of, of clients and in email uh, responses to my latest blog posts, you know, that a lot of people are asking, what is the difference between an empath or a codependent? And to keep this short, I just want you to know that if you are empathetic, you feel everything very deeply. 
Um, you feel other people's energy and oftentimes it throws you into overwhelm. So first of all, look at what's right about that. Remember, there's nothing wrong with you. Um, there's no shame in being sensitive. And maybe as a child, you were told that you were too sensitive like I was and you shut down that capacity. It is a gift to feel deeply. And when this happens, um, when there is shame, your zone collapses or if you're feeling overwhelmed by all the pain and you're constantly in this hypervigilant state of overwhelm, then you are going to tend to, um, you know, have it show up in, in physical symptoms if you don't, go, don't resolve it in physical symptoms of anxiety and depression and mystery disease. And, um, you know, if you are empathetic, you have a psychic capacity most of the time, not always, because you had some kind of big traumatic event or a lot of accumulation of small, tiny traumas as a child. And maybe you didn't have um, the opportunity um, to work your way out that because you didn't have an adult to do that for you. So you decided to become very um, needy or became a rescuer you know and, and you might be doing this for a lot of reasons maybe you were told that it was your job and your family to take care of everybody else i know that there's a couple of you on here that that took on that role um but this is sort of where you become a rescuer it's because you have suffered an abandonment or there's fear of abandonment or it was maternal abandonment and i go really deeper into this in in the attachment theory but just for the sake of today um just know that that psychologically, if that is you, if you can relate to that, you're always looking to fix and to rescue. So there's a lot of spiritual bypass because you're sensing that somebody else is upset. Um, and it could be your mother, your grandmother, your sibling, it could be a stranger, you know, that you see in trouble and you, and you just want to jump in there and make that person feel better. And sometimes it's self-deprecating, sometimes it's very self-sacrificing, um, or it's where you are constantly in this rescue mode um, and, and you do that through humor. I used to do that by being the clown in the family. Um, sometimes it's in enabling the other person because seeking is a sense of validation. So not just know, not all empaths are codependent, but codependents tend to be very empathetic to others. So I hope that makes sense. Just give me the questions. Um, if, if, if you want me to go deeper into this, because I really want to just get into the five key um, like life skills that might help you to revitalize, re-energize yourself, or just to stay grounded right now so that you can get through the next two months of the year without going into some kind of addictive coping mechanism um, or, or some kind of shutdown or, or get, get yourself in, in some situation where you get really, really sick and you don't seem to get better because you're just exhausted. So the first thing to do is to practice this energy medicine. You know, for me, it's so important. Um, and I talk a lot deeper into this as the foundation of the trust process and my animal communication work and also in my out of the blues um, nervous system reset. And, but simply, you know, just notice where your energy is um, through the breath, you know, nice deep belly breath. Um, when you're in a place where you are triggered and you feel that you are in the rescue mode or you feel like you need rescued, but you never felt safe to ask for what you wanted before and to just nurture yourself, to be the secure adults for your child parts that are, are in a reactive state because, you know, it is your natural state as an empath to be sympathetic, that you need to be very conscious of how you relate to the world naturally. And you have to have um, a higher source of consciousness um, where you're activating your neocortex. Um, and, and look at how is your brain getting you to respond? How's your nervous system responding to this? So start your day grounded in that loving, compassionate place with your child parts and tell yourself, you know, that you can look at the situation with the kind eyes of the adult and also see it through the eyes of the child first, you know, and, and meet her there. So, you know, just for example, say you, you hear a tragic story on the news and you get really, really upset and you find yourself um, just 
totally overcome by imagining how this woman on the on the TV um, is feeling because she's lost her child. I certainly feel like that when I look at all the animal cru cruelty um, and the ways that people treat animals on Facebook. And I know that I have to put a, a strong boundary in place. Um, so that I don't get sucked down by all this heavy energy of all this graphic evidence of how badly people treat animals and just ground yourself in um, looking at what are the actions that you do have control over where you can help animals and maybe that is going to volunteer at a shelter or going to work in a soup kitchen or whatever it is, some some aligned action that you can use your gifts and, and talents to support people that you can support. Remember, you can't heal the whole world at once, um, but changing the life of one person or animal is like an anchor that keeps you focused on, on where you're going. Otherwise, it's a very slippery slope down the rabbit hole. Um, to depression and anxiety very very quickly you can get sucked into that so you know limit your time on Facebook as well and also um, remember that the greatest gift that you can give to yourself too is being in allowance to notice um, what other people are choosing but not feel like you have to go and rescue them or give them unsolicited advice of what they should do um, to resolve whatever challenge that is. To me that is a form of abuse because um, you're not being asked and I learned um, through my human design that I need to wait before I respond to people. I need to wait for them to ask before I actually give give my insight on that. Um, and that was a huge relief for me to actually be able to push pause and just be an, a, a quiet observer. Just listen. So many times people just need somebody to listen to them. So look at that, you know, and, and, um, and be kind to yourself. Be compassionate to yourself first before you sort of gestalt into somebody else's story or body. The second way to do this is is have a have a daily practice that you either end your day at, and you can start your day with this, but practice active appreciation as you go through your day. Write in your gratitude journal. Write um, some of the things that you want to do because this forms some of the rituality um, that are going to keep you from spinning out of overwhelm. And um, Put down some real strong anchors if you are feeling like you're you're stuck in some kind of toxic sludge of codependency. So the third thing is is to um, follow your body's natural impulses. Look at what your body's asking you to do, and maybe that is an Epsom salt bath with some beautiful um, calming uh, essential oils that can just calm down your nervous system and 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 book out time that you can just lie in, in the bath and and soak in that peaceful moment of of the Epsom salts that are pulling toxins out of your body and practice that regularly. You know, it's it's one of the things that I do is I stock up in bulk on Epsom salts and make sure that I give myself at least one or two Epsom salt baths, which are very, very soothing, you know. So light some candles, put on some beautiful music because remember too that depression is often a call for deep rest. So the other other thing to look at is good sleep hygiene, good boundaries around sleep, and prepare yourself like you would a baby to go to sleep if you're one of those like me that can't quiet down the mind, so you're wired and tired. So add in some nighttime rituals in your life like turmeric milk or warm chai tea or, or some chamomile tea and have a beautiful warm bath before you go to, to bed to just calm down your nervous system and learn to hold on to the self right to remember who you are in all of the of the crazy making that's going on around you um the fourth thing to do as i said it it kind of forms part of the follow the body's natural impulse listen to your body notice where you're holding tension in your body maybe um you'll lie down on the floor i do this every night and just sort of stretch my body and really just let go of any uh, tension that i'm still holding on in my body so that my body gets to um decompress so to speak before i get into bed um, and that can be a really great way to do it. You know, do a do a brain dump, like I said, in, in your journal, as along with putting down your active appreciation, your gratitude for the day. Do a brain dump of all the things that um, 
you need to do in the morning so that they don't keep you awake all night. Um, and make sure you get to bed, you know, at aim for 10 o'clock. I know how difficult it is to do that. But when you can aim for 10 o'clock at night, then you need to know. You need to set your clock for half past nine and start winding down before that. Because I know that when you are sleep deprived, everything seems bigger than it is. Um, and and also look at, you know, where you you can't say no and know your no and also ask for what you need because maybe you were ashamed or um, you had avoidant parents in your in your in your childhood days and maybe your body's still holding on to that so just be gentle with yourself if you haven't done this before give yourself the space with somebody that can hold that space for you this is what secure attachment is to just let have somebody be the witness the listener for you that isn't going to be wanting to jump in and fix you or make you feel better allow yourself to go into grief or um, to, to get angry and learn how to create safety for yourself, okay? And the fifth and final thing, because I have a client at seven, so I need to jump off right now. But, um, you know, I think, I think um, using the beautiful gift of detachment is, is a really important thing to do, right? Um, create like a force field around you. Strengthen your way chi. Um, which is governed by the gallbladder, the wood element in Chinese medicine, um, so that you can move through things properly and be willing to look at things as just an interesting point of view, right? Use the power of, of um, detaching from other people and, and make sure that if you do feel kind of sticky or, or heavy after you've had an interaction with someone at work or in the grocery store or whatever, is to you know clean off other people's energy, shake it off. Um, use your body, put on some music and dance or um, smudge with some beautiful sage, smudge your environment uh, with sage, light some beautiful candles that you can focus and meditate on. Um, but really just use some simple ritualities that are going to help you to stay grounded and focused on what you have to do in the tasks at hand um, so that you can keep your energetic hygiene um, really strong and healthy in those healthy boundaries. Um, so I hope you found those those reminders um, helpful for today. But just remember, um, you know, that you have the power of choice. Bring your awareness into your body and follow your body's natural impulses to move, to shake off things, to push paws on the world and clean off the day. And that just might be under the shower, you know, and make sure you get a good night's sleep. I can't tell you how important sleep hygiene is and all of this. Switch off also all your um, Wi-Fi and electronics. Uh, don't keep your phone anywhere near your room. Don't make sure your room is nice and dark. Um, EMFs play havoc, not just on our own bodies, but on our animals' bodies as well. So just start to add in some of these simple rituals into your life because you're going to start feeling more energized and you're going to start feeling more vital and more joyful. And as always, tread, joy tread gently on your soft animal body and just remember to trust that you are enough. The world will carry on without you. So. Um, Pace yourself over the next two months because you know that there's a lot coming, going to be coming up. And um, thank you for being here too. You know, I know that you're the action takers. You're doing your personal work. Um, you care deeply about the world, and you're looking for ways to heal the brokenness that's so evident around the planet right now. So, um, just. Go at the pace of your own body. Keep the questions coming. Um, let me have your comments. If, if this resonated with you, please let me know which part you're going to practice. Put your attention down. I think sometimes, too, um, when we share our, attention, our, our intentions by posting them um, in groups like this, then we can have witness there to keep our appointments with ourselves, you know, to not... Um, get flying off in the busyness and forget that 
you need your physical body to be healthy in order to carry you through the, the beautiful experiences of life and to be able to handle the challenges when they come up because you didn't wait until you got sick or you were too exhausted to do this. It's the same thing I always say between living well so that you can transition well and leave your body. You need to do it when you have vital life force energy in you. So remember, you know, we're looking for inch by inch is a cinch, yard by yard is hard. Look for the one degree shifts that are going to keep you anchored in your truth and trust that you'll get you'll get it all done. And if you don't, you know, I always like to say, um, is it going to kill me? Um, is anyone going to get hurt if I don't do this? Because I think we as women put so much pressure on ourselves to do more than we are at actually capable of doing and yes we could probably get it all done but nobody really cares so care for yourself care for your body practice self-care practice self-love be compassionate to your child parts that are perhaps having a temper tantrum at the moment and and just know that you're you're not alone you have support and um thanks for thanks for being here with me good to see you debbie yeah, there will be a replay on this. And um, I will be doing um, a series of videos because this is, again, something that's coming up more and more. So I've created, I, I want to create a, a series of very short videos that I will be um, gifting for free over on my business page, Access Your True Nature, to really help you to live trigger free and to start looking at some of the dynamics and body chemistry around shame and guilt and the difference between them. So um, I'll be jumping in there after my client um, who's patiently waiting for me at around eight. Um, so if you uh, want to know more about that, please join me over at Access Your True Nature. I'll post the Facebook link for that group um, for you to join there. And just remember, like this, share it, follow so that you get notified when I do go live. Sometimes it's very spontaneous because I want to speak to some Thing that is sort of coming up as a constant pattern uh, repeat for for many many people and then I know that I need to speak to that and 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 also your questions give me um, inspiration to speak to the parts that you need to heal so please keep them coming in um, and I'll meet you there all right take care bye